Hello and welcome again to my Physics Online video lecture series. Today's video, we're going to be talking about RC circuits. Um, and in some sense, we're talking about part one of resistor and capacitor circuits. So there's actually kind of two-ish parts that I want to do, um, at least for now. One of them being uh, basically today, which is introducing the equations that describe the current and, and whatnot, the charge, the voltage, all, all of that. And the other one being really for a future video in which I will hopefully discuss some of the relevant graphs that are associated with RC circuits. So um, RC circuits, we're talking about a circuit that basically has a resistor and a capacitor, which are in series. Um, the capacitor is either being charged by a battery through the resistor, or it's discharging through the resistor. So you're looking at circuits whose diagrams may look something like this. Uh, for example, here's my resistor, and then somewhere else in series of it, I have a capacitor. And then this is either connected um, through a closed loop like this. Um, so this would be discharging. Um, and Or I could have one where I have a resistor and then a capacitor. And then connected to those, I have a battery which is um, has an EMF that is greater than whatever the uh, uh, voltage drop across the capacitor is. So this would be a charging um, circuit. Uh, so this has EMF, R, and C. This would be R and C. But in terms of voltages, you have maybe delta VR and delta V. C. Um, and down here, delta VC and delta VR. It's charging, um, assuming, of course, that epsilon is greater than delta VC. If delta VC is greater than epsilon, then actually it's going to be discharging through the battery as well as the resistor. Um, and essentially, you would then need to know what the difference between these two is to figure out um, the relevant parameters. Um, the Kirchhoff's loop rule in each case, so I've drawn diagrams. Let's look at Kirchhoff's loop uh, rule for each of these uh, two circuits. This one right here has delta V C plus delta V R is equal to zero. And then down here, we essentially have our EMF plus our delta VC plus our delta VR equals zero. And you can use Ohm's law for delta VR. That would be I times R. You can use the um, uh, delta V is Q over C, basically your definition for capacitance to get it for the capacitor. Um, and as it turns out, these two equations in both cases are a type of equation in which you've listed, let's say, Q over C plus IR equals zero. And recall that current is defined as rate change of charge. So it's rate at which charge is moving through the wire. But it is also the rate change of the charge on the capacitor. Um, and then in, in the other equation, we essentially have, um, if we obey sign uh, uh, conventions, we would have something like negative epsilon plus Q over C plus I times R is equal to zero. Um, and so essentially what this means is that in both cases, I have a variable charge, um, 
and, and we could put parenthetically Q is equal to uh, some function of time. I have a charge, which is a function of time, and then I have the rate at which that function is changing. So the solutions to these two equations, um, I can't really derive for an algebra-based class. Um, they basically come from solving a differential equation uh, for what that's worth. And the solutions actually are straightforward once, once you have them. Um, basically, what you end up getting is that the uh, charge is a function of time, Q of T is equal to Q naught times E to the negative T divided by tau, um, or Q of T is equal to Q max uh, times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. Um, and this is for discharging. This is for charging. Um, and where tau is equal to RC is called the decay time or decay time constant for the RC circuit. So these are your solutions to these equations. Now with that said, um, we don't usually just directly measure charge on the capacitor. We usually measure something else. So things that we can measure directly, things we can measure um, easily, let's say. So with uh, like a digital multimeter or voltmeter, ammeter, etc., would be voltages and currents. So for example, we could do the voltage drop across the capacitor. And for that one, uh, you would have essentially your initial voltage times E to the negative T over tau. Um, and you would have your maximum voltage, which as it turns out is the battery EMF, times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. And again, this is for charging and for discharging. Um, and one thing to note here is that uh, Q max is just epsilon divided by C. OK, so substitution has been made there. How did I get this equation? I basically just used these two equations and made use of um, this equation here, delta Vc is Q over C. Um, another thing I could measure is the voltage drop across the resistor. So delta V sub R should look like either negative uh, V sub C or epsilon minus V sub C, or really negative epsilon um, minus V sub C. Uh, but if you're looking at just like sign conventions and everything, it's going to be the equivalent of whatever the magnitude across the battery is minus the, the voltage drop across the capacitor. So that's just Kirchhoff's rule. So this, of course, would just be, again, delta V naught E to the negative T over tau, or negative delta V naught, depending on how you put the leads of your voltmeter. And this one will also look like um, epsilon times e to the negative t over tau. So again, this is charging um, and this, uh, excuse me, this is a discharging and charging. Um, and yeah, the other thing that you could easily measure is current. So I 
should look like delta V sub R over R by Ohm's law. And so either way, what you get is either I naught e to the negative t over tau or I max e to the negative t over tau, um, again, for discharging and charging. Um, and so where does I max come from? It comes basically from um, I max is equal to epsilon over R and I naught is equal to delta V naught over R. Uh, by the way, what is, uh, what is delta V naught? Delta V naught would represent initial voltage drop um, for a discharging, uh, for a uh, discharging circuit. I've mislabeled these ones right here. This one is the charging. This one is the discharging. Okay. Um, you can also measure other stuff or determine other things like how much power is being run through or, or, or um, dissipated by the resistor. That's going to be I squared R um, or delta V squared over R. Um, so power. This is not so directly measurable. Um, via just an ammeter or a voltmeter, but knowing that P is I squared R, then the power dissipated should look like either I naught squared R E to the negative 2 T over tau, or I max squared R e to the negative 2 t over tau. And if you'd prefer, this would be epsilon squared over r e to the negative 2 t over tau. This is again for the charging case and the discharging case. Okay. Um, quick, quick uh, examples, I guess. All right, we got a 20 microfarad capacitor which is discharging through a 15 kilo ohm resistor. We want to know what is the uh, discharge time constant. So we use tau is equal to RC. We plug in the values um, for resistance and capacitance after converting to ohms and to um, uh, farads, so that's 1.5 times 10 to the 4 ohms times 2.0 by 10 to the minus 5 farads, which gives us actually just 3 times 10 to the minus 1, or 0.3 seconds. We also want to know at what time the capacitor's voltage is half of its initial value. So to do this, we set up the equation from um, our delta V capacitor for the discharging case. Um, and then we also note that the delta VC is going to be half of the initial value. So if you combine these two equations, you get that E to the negative T over tau is one half. So to get rid of the exponent, you have to take a logarithm, natural logarithm of both sides. Natural log of E to the X is just X, in other words. Also, the natural log of 1 over A is negative of the natural log of A. So putting all that together, you get T is tau ln 2, an important result. That's about 0.21 seconds.